Salute, men. Masculine diet. Truth about food. Foods for masculinity. When you start to get some solid RPs in your life, and you start to delve into more spirituality-based content, you always seem to stumble upon veganism and raw food diets and things of that nature. BBD is a self-proclaimed nutrition expert, and I do have a few certificates to back that up. However, it's easy to get fooled by the vegan propaganda. And yes, certain fruits and vegetables are obviously a rich source of vitamins and minerals. However, what fruits and vegetables lack are creatine, carnosine, carnitine, coenzyme Q10, the protein in meat, the amino acids aren't binded to lectins or fiber, they're very easy to digest and assimilate and to activate muscle protein synthesis. Not to mention, saturated fat and cholesterol is essential for testosterone production. I don't care what any other cookie cutter says about that. Besides certain wild berries and leaves, medicinal leaves, fruits and vegetables aren't actually a natural part of our diet. Fruits and vegetables, the far majority of them, are not natural. When you go on a nature hike, you don't see wild fruits and vegetables growing. They are man-made through decades and decades, well centuries for that matter, of agriculture. And the benefit to that, the benefit of fruits and vegetables, the fact that they've been bastardized in a way is that they're actually less toxic because they're not wild plants anymore. Wild plants have insane amounts of poisons and defense mechanisms to protect them. Whereas since fruits and vegetables for the most part have to be cared for and farmed, they don't produce as many of those poisons. The only way I would condone somewhat of a like a raw food vegan type thing would be a short term cleanse preferably fruit say you were to go on a fast you could make part of that fast like a fruit fast to ensure you're hydrated the carbohydrates might have a bit of a muscle preserving effect the pectin and fibers in the fruit will help cleanse out your digestive system a little bit. However, absolutely not long term. If I don't have red meat for a couple days, I feel off. Even fish. Fish is like the vegetable of the meat family. Like it'll, it'll sustain you. It'll be fine. It'll be good, but it's not quite as good. Besides the aforementioned nutrients that only meat can provide, Meat also activates certain enzymes in your body that fruits and vegetables cannot. As far as fruits and vegetables go, I stick to the best bang for my buck, the mainstays. I like asparagus. Asparagus is tremendous. Parsley is an herb, but it's a vegetable too. Parsley is amazing. It's one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. And it, if, you're, if you use garlic, it'll cut the, the odor of the garlic a little bit, too. Broccoli's pretty good. It has an anti-estrogen effect. Peppers are tremendous. Just ensure if you're not buying them organic, you wash the heck out of them. They're extremely highly sprayed. What little insect wouldn't want to gobble up a delicious pepper? And speaking of insects, that's part of the... Man, this new world agenda, they're gonna wanna have us all have insect protein substitutes and I think they'd be fantastic in a survival mechanism, but not as a part of our daily diet. And all these lab-grown meats they're coming up with, let's just say I'm not a fan of this technology. 
anything that goes against the Almighty God and the way He designed food for us. And nothing in life is free. That's why back in the day we actually had to kill the animals ourselves. The only time I would suggest a, a vegetarian diet, I would never say go full vegan, but you could possibly get away with being a vegetarian if you're a blood type A. I'm a huge fan of the blood type diet. Look it up if you know your blood type. It's the go-to main diet I adhere to. Back to fruits and vegetables, I wasn't even done my list. Uh, also, I'll buy the occasional bag of frozen peas and carrots to add to my stews. Blueberries, you can't go wrong with blueberries. They're basically one of the closest things to a wild fruit. Pomegranates are fantastic. They talk about pomegranate in the Bible. You can buy pomegranate juice. It's outstanding for your circulation and your testosterone levels. If you're going to go with fruit, Go with some of the most nutrient-dense ones that you know you can digest properly. I was talking about how fruits and vegetables have been hybridized and bastardized over the years. An apple used to be the size of a large cherry from Kazakhstan a couple thousand years ago. That's how much our fruits and vegetables have changed over the years. And it was apparently extremely sour. I like to joke about soy all the time, and it's true, I would avoid soy as much as possible. And look at the packaging, look at the ingredients list and things. Like for example, Cliff Bars are mainly soy based. And soy protein isolate is fine, like it doesn't, which is, they don't use that in anything anyways, but it doesn't have any of the phytoestrogens in it. But there's so many other plant alternatives and better protein alternatives anyways. You shouldn't even bother with soy protein isolate. Even worse than soy is beer. Beer will bitch you up, man. Beer is made of hops. Hops is so estrogenic, like probably a hundred times, if not more, than soy. Young women in Germany who used to work in the hops fields would start menstruating like five years earlier because of just breathing in the phytoestrogens from the hops. I'm a huge fan of herbal teas, not coffee. I don't drink coffee. If I do, I tend to drink too much and it gets me... It doesn't agree with me. I, I do like my green tea, which is a source of caffeine, and I used to be worried about green tea and testosterone levels. However, green tea also has an anti-estrogenic effect, which balances it out, and it doesn't actually have a detrimental effect on your testosterone, from the research I've done. Other fruits that are fine to include in your diet, grapes are good, get the seeded ones. I consider any fruit without a seed a gay fruit. Speaking of anti-estrogenic effects, citrus fruits are outstanding. Their lemon water has an extremely cleansing effect. Grapefruit is a powerhouse immune booster. Oranges and OJ, you can go without. Little overrated, and only God knows what ends up in those Tropicana and mainstream 100% quote-unquote fruit juices you're getting at your grocery store. Besides the blood type diet though, everybody's different. Every food reacts to everybody's individual digestive system differently. We all have unique gut bacteria that outnumbers our body cells by threefold. Which is crazy to even think about, however it's true. Nothing wrong with rice, however, it's just a filler food. It, it has no significant nutritional value. That's why poor people eat it. It, 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 it does the trick, however, it's, it's cheap and it fills you up. And if you eat too much, it can fatten you up. It's with a favorite food to gobble down all day of sumo wrestlers. So minimize the soy, avoid the beer. I don't drink any, any more. However, if you're going to have a drink, have a stiff man drink. Have some scotch or some whiskey on the rocks or something. And this isn't popular. A lot of men love their pizza and their bread, and but wheat will bitch you up. I will reaffirm that wheat will bitch you up, man. Avoid wheat. 
Blood type A's might be the only ones I can get away with it, however still in moderation. On the rare occasion, I'll treat myself to some gluten-free bread, because the two brands that I buy, they actually use sorghum flour in the concoction, which sorghum can actually raise your dihydrotestosterone, which is the most masculine form of testosterone. I avoid avoid pork like the plague and I know that's unpopular too everybody loves seems to love their bacon it's expensive however beef jerky is exceptional and the added benefit to beef jerky is that it gives your jaw a tremendous workout it works out your jaw muscles and can actually give you a more chiseled jawline one of my favorite midday snacks when I'm not fasting is a handful of beef jerky with a handful of pumpkin seeds and I just chew on that for about five minutes. A note on fasting, sometimes I'll take HMB and glutamine when I'm prolonged fasting. I know it might break the fast, however, it gives me peace of mind that I'm preserving muscle and it curbs, it keeps my appetite curbed along with my herbal teas. Avoid peppermint tea if you're doing herbal tea peppermint and spearmint are detrimental to your testosterone any other herbal tea i can think of off the top of my head besides licorice too is fine but uh, yeah especially mint guys avoid mint teas if i could only pick one food to live on it would be beef for me because i'm a type o If I was a blood type A, for example, it'd be quinoa. And quinoa is amazing, guys. Quinoa is amazing for all blood types. And it's super high in ectosterones, which are incredibly anabolic, meaning muscle growth promoting substances. So quinoa across the board is tremendous. Speaking of anabolic substances, a lot of people misuse BCAAs or leucine. They're, the two are interchangeable. Leucine's the main amino acid in BCAAs. But you never want to take those on an empty stomach. That's like the worst thing you can do. However, I love my BCAAs because the hack behind it is you require a certain amount of leucine to activate mTOR in protein synthesis. And the other amino acids are required, but not as much required. So say you have a medium protein meal, say you eat a couple eggs, or like I said, a handful of beef jerky with some pumpkin seeds, or a small serving of chicken or tuna salad. You can take your scoop of BCAAs with that to fortify the existing protein and spike up your muscle protein synthesis. That's how BCAA should be used. However, if it's a very large protein meal, they're obviously not necessary. But with a smaller protein meal can be an extremely good hack. A little trick you can do with creatine is mix a little bit of baking soda in with the creatine. There's an old supplement called Purple K that they said was state-of-the-art technology, and that's all it was. It was creatine and baking soda. So if you want to amp up your creatine a little bit, just be mindful. Just not too much. A little bit of baking soda will alkalize it and help, help ensure not as much of it gets denatured into creatinine, which is bad for your kidneys. That's what gives creatine the bad rap. Beans are overrated. They're not a real natural food for people either. If I could only pick one, it would be fava beans. And if you only pick one, it would be fava beans too, hopefully. Because fava beans are outstanding. Like, they're almost a complete protein. They have L-DOPA that increases your growth hormone. Fava beans are are top-notch. That's my go-to bean. Keep that in mind if you're making a chili or something like that. Avoid those toxic red kidney beans and use fava beans instead. I'll run down a few foods off the top of my head that I tend to avoid too. I don't eat potatoes, anything with wheat, pork, almost all beans, and obviously sweets and soda or anything. Eat as close to the way the Almighty God intended for you. And... 
despite what some of those malnourished, sunken face vegans might tell you, that's meat and fish. Things of that nature. Hope you enjoyed this unscripted off the top of my head rant about diet and nutrition. If I left anything out, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll answer it for you in the comments. Check out my latest video in the top left corner. Check out another one under that one. And check out another video in the bottom right corner. And subscribe BBD in the top right corner. My PayPal is in the description and pinned comment with all my latest videos. Shout out to my dude Porphy for the donation. Love that guy. I'm out of here. Peace.